about this world of ours, and ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in Spine Chillers. <laughs> The creaking door. The manufacturers of State Express 3-5 Filter King cigarettes take pleasure in presenting The Creaking Door. the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders and the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. sort of name, John Smith. What could be more ordinary than that? But he is a most unusual man, really. Take his blood group, for instance. His blood group is group AB. Very rare indeed, as the doctor is pointing out to him. Only 2% of people belong to group AB, Mr. Smith. I know my group is very rare. And this young girl is dying. She must have a transfusion as soon as possible, otherwise she will die. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But surely I'm not the only person with this type of blood in the area? Oh, no doubt there are other people, but we don't know everyone's blood group offhand, just like that. We depend, as you know, on blood donors. You're the only registered donor in this area. But, but there must be someone else. Oh, believe me, Mr. Smith, there isn't. Anyway, giving a transfusion isn't anything to worry about. There's nothing to it. I've given blood before. I know that. Then you'll help us? You'll help the young girl? I, I can't. I, I can't go through that again. I won't. You've no right to ask oh, me. Please, Mr. Smith, calm down. What I'm asking isn't so terrible. Yes, it is. But you said yourself... You don't know what you're asking. I can't do it. Mr. Smith, unless young Beryl Rogers receives a transfusion of blood, type AB blood... She will most certainly die. But there must be somebody else who can do it. Why pick on me? I've told you why, Mr. Smith. You're the only registered donor in the area. Well, then what about outside the area? What about blood banks? You keep supplies of blood under refrigeration these days, don't you? Our own local supplies of AB blood from the blood bank are exhausted. To find supplies elsewhere and fly them here would take too long. The girl would die. Oh, hang it all, man. All I'm asking you to do is give a pint of your blood. That's all. Not your life. No. That's not what you're asking. And you don't know what you're asking. I can't do it. I can't. Very well. And then there's nothing more I can do. Well, I can't force you, I'm afraid. There is, unfortunately, no law which says that one must give blood. 
But I hope, Mr. Smith, that you'll be able to live with your conscience after tonight. After this young girl dies because you won't help. And I hope you can face yourself in the mirror each day. It wouldn't be saving her. Don't you understand? It wouldn't. It would be only postponing something which might as well be ended now. This girl's life has already ended. Unless you can find someone else to help. You're the only one, Mr. Smith. I've told you before. You're the only one. Her only chance. Then if I'm her only chance, she hasn't got one. You refuse to help her? Yes. Mr. Smith, this is a free country. You have every right to say that. You must have a very good reason for letting a young girl go to an untimely death like this. I have. Won't you tell me what it is? You wouldn't believe me. Nobody believes me. I promise. I, I listen with an open mind. You see, the girl's father is waiting outside to hear your decision. I'll have to tell him something. All right. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's been making my life a nightmare for the last three years. I first registered as a blood donor about three and a half years ago. As you said, my group is the rarest. There aren't many donors. But also, there aren't so many people needing transfusions. So it was about five months before I was called on to help. He was a young man. Derek Evans. I still remember his name. He'd been badly cut up in a motor accident. They phoned me from this hospital at about two in the morning. I came along here and gave two pints of blood. It, it saved young Derek's life. At least that's what we all thought. But it didn't save his life, really. It only saved him for a far more horrible death. Two or three days after I'd given the blood, I, I came along to the hospital to see how he's getting on. By this time, he was sitting up in bed looking quite well again. I was interested to see the man whose life had been saved by my blood, I suppose. But also, I, I felt I had to see him. You see, Doctor, my blood was flowing in his veins. Already I felt a strange sort of kinship with him. I sat on the chair beside his bed and smiled at him. Well, how are you feeling? Oh, fine, fine. It's uh, funny to think about it, isn't it? What? Well, that, that your blood is now flowing around my body, uh, through my brain, and making me think and breathe. Yes. Yes, it, it is. Well, uh, I must confess, I, I don't feel any different. 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 Come on, darling. Jill, come on. This part's quite solid, but now she's well over to the west. That... Oh! Oh, wait, wait. Help! Help! I, I, I'm sinking! No, no! Don't come any nearer! Throw me a rope! Help! Jill, help! I, I'm in the quicksand! I'm sinking! I'm sinking! Help! Ah! Uh, Mr. Smith, are, uh, are you all right? Uh, all right. Oh, good heavens! How oh, terrible! Oh, what is it? What's the matter? You... You've gone quite pale. No, no. Uh, it's... It's nothing. I I'll be all right. But there was something. And I didn't dare tell him. As he'd been speaking, suddenly into my mind's eye, they'd flashed a picture that had been frightening me real. It wasn't as if I had imagined myself somewhere else or anything like that. I'd been completely aware that I was sitting in the hospital ward. But in the front of my consciousness... It flashed a picture of young Derek Evans and a girl walking beside him. He'd suddenly stepped into a quicksand and, and as I watched, horrified, I'd seen him sucked down into the morass. I didn't tell him what I'd imagined. It's not the sort of thing you tell a convalescent patient. But as soon as I could, I made my excuses and left. I tried to put the remembrance of it from my mind, but... That night, I couldn't sleep. The next morning, I made a phone call to Derek's parents. Hello? Mrs. Evans? Speaking. Who's this? 
My name isn't important. I wonder if you can tell me, has your son Derek got a girlfriend? My son's engaged to be married. Who is this? Please, this is very important. Could you tell me what his fiancée's name is? Oh, really, I... Please, it, it's, it's very important. Well, I, I don't know what business it can possibly be of yours. But her name is Jill. I'd somehow known somewhere in the dark recesses of my mind that that was the name she was going to say. Jill. The name which I'd heard Derek call out in my... in my vision. I was stunned. For a long time, I, I walked about like a man in a daze. Was it possible that the fact that my blood was flowing in his veins had somehow given me the ability to see into Derek's future? It seemed too unbelievable to contemplate. Finally, I, I decided to return to the hospital and tell him the whole story. It might well be nothing but nonsense, but at least he should be warned, I thought. I phoned to check when I'd be allowed to see him. What name was that again? E Evans. Derek Evans. E he was in a motor accident. Oh, uh, that, Mr. Evans. I'm afraid it will be no use coming to see him, sir. Why not? He was discharged from hospital two days ago. <laughs> phoned his home, of course. But his mother told me that he'd gone away for a week or so into the country to convalesce. She must have been a little suspicious of me making odd phone calls by this time, because she refused to tell me where I could get in touch with him. But looking back, it wouldn't have been any good anyway. At the time, I told myself that I was behaving hysterically over nothing and tried to put the whole thing from my mind. I succeeded, too, up to a point, until a couple of days later... I bought the evening paper as usual. And there it was, staring me in the face. A young man, Derek Evans, was drowned today in a quicksand, not far from the village of Medside. His fiancée, Miss Jill Worthing, was with him. He escaped her. So now you see, Doctor, why I'm not going to give this young girl any of my blood. My blood is evil. It brings about death in the most horrible fashion. And worse than that, I know about it in advance. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. to his future by giving him some of his blood for the good old-fashioned way. <laughs> then you're quite out of it. Oh, for heaven's sake, why can't you leave me alone? You don't seem to understand what you're asking. I've told you it's happened four times in the past, and each time I've lived under a terrible shadow of doom and until the person concerned has died. But look, if you believe what you say to be true, then one can take precautions. Take Derek Evans, for instance. He could have been prevented from going away into the country. The tragedy could have been avoided. I said that with Rose Warwick. But at least in her case, I was sure that my vision couldn't possibly come true. What happened? Rose was a cripple. I gave her blood, saved her life. Then I saw her quite clearly in my mind's eye. She was screaming for help, and there was ice all around her and ice skating. 
The more I thought about it, the more impossible it was. She couldn't even walk, let alone skate. At last, I thought this sequence was going to be broken. I should be free. And what happened? She was in a crowded cinema when it caught fire. She died, burnt to death. And the film that was showing was called Winter Wonderland. All about ice skating. Are you going to save my daughter's life, or are you going to let her die? I can't do it, Mr. Rogers. Maybe your daughter, Bella, will live without my assistance. That's quite impossible. And we only have about 15 minutes left at the outside. I can't do it. You're, you're a monster. That's what you are. A monster. Now, listen to me, Mr. Smith. I promise you one thing. If you don't help my little girl, and she dies, I'll kill you. All right. All right. What's the use? You don't want to understand either of you. I'll do it. Good. But I'm warning you. I won't be saving your daughter's life, Mr. Rogers. I'll just be keeping her alive so that she can die in a much more horrible fashion. How's her respiration? Normal, Doctor. And the donor? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Uh, she's already getting some color in her cheeks. Uh, all right, nurse, remove the needle. Very well, Doctor. Mr. Smith, I can't thank you enough. Enough. Enough, 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 enough. Please, leave me alone. Don't, I didn't mean. Don't kill me. Take your hands. Please, don't. You. Murder. No. Oh, Mr. Smith, what is it? it? It's never happened as quickly as this before. Though. What's the matter? As the nurse was removing the needle from her arm, I, I saw it. What did you see? The man was standing with his back to me. I, I, I couldn't see his face, but there is it. It, it, it was terrible. Poor girl. What? What did you see? This man had his hands round her throat, and he was strangling her. I haven't saved this poor girl, Doctor. She's going to be murdered. Well, uh, how are you feeling? I'm fine. Who are you? Oh, I helped you when you were very sick. Oh, you're the man who gave me some blood, aren't you? That's right. It's funny to think about it, isn't it? Your blood being pumped about inside me. It must be nice blood because I'm feeling much better. I'm glad. How old are you, Beryl? Sixteen. Nearly seventeen. When are you leaving the hospital? About a week, the doctor said. You... You will be careful, won't you? You're such a pretty girl. Careful? What, what do you mean? Nothing. Nothing. Just be careful. I pray that it doesn't come true this time. <laughs> for the last four months. You were very nice to me while I was in hospital. Oh, nonsense, it's just... You told me that if ever I was in trouble, if ever I needed any help... Well, of course, there's, there's nothing wrong, is there? Well, you met my father, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. How is he? he he's dead. He died last month. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to do. That's why I came to you. You see, I'm not quite 17 yet. Unless I have a respectable place to stay... Well, they're going to put me in a home. That would be awful. That's why I came to you. You said if ever I... I got a job, I could pay for my keep. It wouldn't cost you anything. I haven't got any relatives or friends. My mother's been dead for years. I tried to work out what I should do. And you're the only person I could think of. Please, won't you help me? 
No, 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 no. No, don't cry. Of course I'll help you. I've been thinking about you quite a lot these last three or four months. I can keep an eye on you. Maybe this time I, I can make sure that that vision didn't come through. She moved in. I had a big house and there was plenty of room. I've never married, never had a family. And it was wonderful at first. Just having someone to care about and someone who cared about me. Oh, there was nothing else in it but that. I know what people have been saying, but that was nonsense. She was like a daughter to me, the daughter I'd never had. And then she brought my home. From the start, I, I didn't trust him. He, he was too cocky, too confident. And he was evil. John, this is Mike. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you, I'm sure. How do you do? We're going up for a drive. Yes, of course, Paul. Well, don't be too late back, will you? Oh, don't worry, Mr. Smith. I'll bring her back safe and sound. Hello, I think it's time you went to bed. Past three in the morning. Who's down there with you? It's only Mike. He, he's showing me some new dance steps. <laughs> well, I think it's time you went home. You must get some sleep. You'll never get out to work tomorrow. You, you hurt me, Beryl. Now, come in. I'd better go, Mike. Good night. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, no, you won't. I'll see that you have nothing more to do with her. Now then, what's the meaning of this? What was he talking about? Going away together. <laughs> Why hurt you? You've got no right to listen in on my conversation. No, haven't I? No, you haven't. You're not my father. Or my husband. Or my boyfriend. While you stay in my house, under my roof, you'll try and behave like a respectable person. In that case, it's time I left. What are you talking about? I'd pack my bags and go. Mike will look after me. I should have let her go. She wasn't really my responsibility. But a nagging voice inside said that if I allowed her to leave, this Mike was going to strangle her. It had always been true before. I had to make sure it didn't come through this time. I had to. I raced up the stairs after her and threw open the door of her room. She had an open suitcase on the bed and was throwing clothes into it. You're not leaving. Yes, I am. And you can't stop me. I can't, can't I? I'll see you do as I tell you, you little tramp. I'll see that you don't get murdered. I'll save you in spite of yourself. Please, if you're looking at me, you're joking me. Judge believes your story, Smith. 
because I don't. at times, can't they? Anyway, don't worry too much. We'll make John Smith very cozy down here. I'm sure he'll find that he has a few blood brothers, in fact. <laughs> the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders and the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. This is your host back again. Just a reminder of our rendezvous next week. Where are we going? Through the creaking door, of course. <laughs> the manufacturers of State Express 3.5's Filter King cigarettes invite you to listen next Saturday at 9 o'clock when they will again present... Creaking door.